So I posed a question on Instagram about if you guys would like if I would make a video about my health and weight journey. And a lot of you guys said yes and I get a lot of questions about what my like regimen is and the kinds of things that I eat. So I wanted to make a video just to make it easier for myself, sorry. The first thing I want to say is just to give a disclaimer, I am not a doctor, I am not a nutritionist, I am just a girl who suffered from pre-diabetes, from severe back pain, who had thyroid issues, who just wanted to lose weight and get healthy. So my point of view and, and the things that I'm going to talk about in this video are not from like a medical standpoint, there's no like scientific, I can't tell you um, specific percentages and all these things, but I'm just telling you what I feel works for me. I am not a woman who is naturally skinny, I know a lot of people have high metabolism and that's really great. I'm a woman who's always struggled with weight, it runs in my family, diabetes runs in my family, heart disease runs in my family thyroid disorders run in my family. So this is from the point of view of someone who does struggle with weight. So if you're kind of like me and it's not easy to take off pounds, this video is for you. So before I get into actual diet and the things that I do and do not eat, first I don't like the word diet because that implies that you're only doing it for a short period of time. You're doing it so that you can lose the next 10 pounds and after that you can sort of do whatever you want. I hate the word diet. When I say diet, I mean the way that I eat and not changing the way that I eat for a short period of time. There are two things that I want to talk about for general diet. The first thing is motivation. If your motivation is wrong, it's going to be very difficult to lose weight. If you're losing weight for someone else, it's not going to get you very far. If you're losing weight because you have this like ideal vision of what the beautiful woman is, it may not still work because you might have the adverse effects, you might suffer from depression and then eat more. If your motivation is health-based, if your motivation is for your own well-being, I found that I had a lot more energy when I started to lose weight and I just felt generally happier that's a great motivation to so just feel better about yourself. Perspective. In terms of perspective, if your attitude is, I want to eat what I want to eat, I want to just live my life, like you only have so many years on this earth, why can't I have a cheeseburger? That's fine. That is not the way to lose weight. I had to get to a point where I loved myself more than I loved Food. And that means loving myself means that I value my health and my physical, emotional, mental well-being over the taste of some of my favorite foods and snacks and desserts. I'm going to say the first step to losing weight instead of changing your diet is changing your perspective. Because until you change your perspective, you're just going on a diet, meaning changing what you're eating to meet a short-term goal and then reverting back afterward. And I did it. I did it for so long. I, I mean, that's why I say I started this journey well before that because I would go on diets. I would lose 20 pounds and then I'd gain 30 pounds afterwards because I thought that changing the way I ate for two months was going to help me in the long run and it doesn't. It's really not. So it takes proper motivation and changing your perspective initially in order to lose weight. Now that we have that covered and now that we've gotten to a place where we are motivated by the right things and that our perspective is that we love ourselves more than we love food, now we can talk about diet. So now I want to tell you how I got started. I went to the doctor and I went to an endocrinologist and I found out that I was pre-diabetic and I had very high levels of these antibodies that attack your thyroid and she thought that I may have had something on my thyroid. I had to go get an ultrasound, it was really, really scary and not something I would want to go through again. And I was told that because these antibodies were so high that I have to check in with the endocrinologist if I ever wanted to have a baby. Um, 
because it can cause miscarriages and, and all these things. And that's really, like, that's, that to me was terrifying. Because that to me is, is the future and it changes my future. So around this time that all this was happening, and I was wondering, like, man, how am I going to lose weight? Because all these issues stemmed from weight. Like, even though my family suffers from these things and it's, I'm, like, predisposed to it, none of it would have come about had I not weighed as much as I did. All of these medical issues were happening at around the time that my church was starting the Daniel Fast. If you guys don't know what the Daniel Fast is, it's basically vegan plus whole grain plus zero sugars plus nothing to drink but water. So it's a little extreme. It was only for 21 days. It was like, you know, to be in solidarity and united as a church, you know, for one purpose. We were all praying and fasting for the same one thing as a church. So, you know, it started, it didn't start as a weight loss thing. It was just to be unified with the church. And it was tough. Like, even though it was like, like there was a purpose behind it, it was really difficult for me to do that, especially with the coffee. Oh my goodness. Anyway, so these 21 days happen. Each day I have to remind myself to take it one day at a time. And that's most of this weight loss journey. Most of this weight loss journey is truly just taking it one day at a time. By the time we got to the end of the 21 days, I had lost weight as a result of it, and it felt really good. And I did not expect it. And that's where perspective comes in. The perspective was, wow, I feel really good not eating junk food. I want to keep doing it. I want to move further. I want to keep doing it. So I just continued that fast until I hit a plateau and then I sort of changed it a little bit. So again, this is just really extreme. It was just sort of um, an experience that I had that made that sort of like kicked my body into overdrive and I had energy and I was losing weight, my back pain was going down, the diabetes, the, the level that I was, like the A1C that they look at, that they like diagnose you as pre-diabetic, that number was going down. So it was amazing. So that was sort of my experience. But what that experience gave me more than weight loss was a look at how what I was eating was affecting my body. I'm no longer vegan. I'm not a fan. Another disclaimer, I'm not a fan of these fad diets. I'm going to call them fad diets. The keto thing, the paleo thing, the vegan thing, all that great stuff. Not a fan. You might be on it and it might work really well for you. I think a lot of people can do perfectly fine just monitoring the amount of food and the types of food that they're eating and where that food is coming from. I don't think it's necessary to cut out entire food groups out of your life in order to maintain a healthy lifestyle. That being said, I still don't drink dairy, but it's because I'm a little lactose intolerant now. So let's talk about general diet. This is my general diet. Again, not a nutritionist. I am not a dietitian. I'm not a doctor. This is what I've experience and how my body runs at like the maximum performance. Five things. Whole grain, dairy free, no red meat, reduced sugar, zero juice or soda. Those are five things. And you can take all of these five things, you can start one at a time, you start just dairy free and like, you know, snowball into this whole diet change. It sounds crazy. I'm not starving myself. I eat food. I snack. I'm like a regular person. And I even go out with my friends and I eat out and I don't always follow this diet when I'm eating out with friends. But most of my day, most of my week, most of my month, I am following this 
to a T because I found that it's the healthiest thing for me to put into my body. I found that it's the healthiest way for me to eat and live. The first thing, whole grain. I'm going to say whole grain is great. I still like to reduce the amount of carbs I'm consuming. Not like a keto thing. I still have toast every so often. If I'm running late, I'll make a peanut butter sandwich. But whole grain is very important. Those white grains, I feel like, make me really bloated and it just takes a long time to digest. There's so many bad chemicals in there, regardless. So just like, get rid of it. <laughs> Don't. So whole grain, what I would say is cutting that white rice and replacing it with brown rice and or like quinoa if you can do it. I've tried quinoa. I don't know if I don't know how to cook it. I just can't do quinoa. Maybe it's me. Let me know. In terms of bread and all the things that come from bread, crackers, pita, tortillas, all those things, I try to limit it severely. I, I would say that I eat bread maybe three times a week, if that. I try to put as little bread into my diet as possible. It's been three times a week lately because I've been on the go a lot. I've been doing a lot of shows, so I've been just grabbing like peanut butter and banana sandwiches, which are my favorite thing in the world. Um, the bread is really low calorie, but it's also whole grain. It's really great bread, Trader Joe's love Trader Joe's. This is not sponsored by Trader Joe's, but everyone in my life knows I'm just obsessed. So, I try to limit as much bread as possible. If you can make something without bread, make it without bread. Skip the egg sandwich, just make eggs. Skip the hummus and crackers, have carrots and hummus instead. Try to swap out that bread as often as you can. It's the best thing. So for the brown rice, I don't have rice every single day. Again, like carbs in general, you should try to limit. I'm not saying eliminate them because that's how, I feel like that's how we create like bad habits and like we end up like binging on something later because we never have bread and now we're like, just like gorging on loaves of bread. So I don't suggest eliminating it entirely. I would suggest limiting it to a few, very few times a week, if that. The second thing, dairy-free. I am now dairy-free. I was not dairy-free for all of my life. It's better for you than just drinking like whole milk. It's also lower calorie. The taste, you get used to it. I haven't tried soy milk. I've tried oat milk, but it's also very high calorie. It's almost like whole milk, so I feel like it doesn't make a difference. I've I haven't tried coconut milk or cashew milk or walnut milk, all these other milks. I've only tried almond milk and it worked. So that's what I use. Cheese is something that also feels really heavy. I think cheese is something that a lot of people are going to struggle giving up. And if you can find a way to still fit cheese into your diet and still use weight and look healthy, go you. I can no longer eat cheese. I'm just gonna live like this. So the third thing was no red meat. I will only have chicken or turkey. It sounds boring. I love myself more than I love food. I don't miss it anymore. That's the biggest thing. The longer that you do this, the easier it is. The more that you say to yourself, that's not worth it, the easier this will get every day. When I first started this, oh my goodness, was I craving hamburgers all the time. But now I'm fine. Now I'm like chicken burgers without a bun on a bed of vegetables, maybe some brown rice. Sounds yummy. Sounds perfectly fine to me. I'm just not craving the things I used to crave. So guys, the longer that you do this, the easier it gets, I promise. Fish is fine. I'm not a fish person. You can ask my parents, you can ask my husband. I don't like fish. I don't know what it is. It's 
Let me think what should I do. I think the only thing I'll eat is salmon or I'll do like shrimp, but that's more shellfish. But chicken, turkey, and fish. I feel like that's pretty straightforward. Fourth was reduced sugar. And this is where it hurts. This is where it hurts. Because I have a sweet tooth. I love dessert. I love cookies. I love friends. I bake. So when I bake things, I can't even eat them. It's horrible. <laughs> that being said, Americans are so addicted to sugar. It's not even funny. And for me, it took taking sugar out of everything that I ate, especially because I'm pre-diabetic. If you're pre-diabetic, start looking at some of the food that you're eating. Because I was trying to get whole wheat crackers because I thought that that was healthy, and they put sugar in it. And I had to find whole wheat crackers that didn't put sugar in it. And spaghetti sauce, I had to find that they didn't put sugar in. Which if I can backtrack, whole wheat pasta. Still goes in the same category with bread in like serious moderation, but it's still better than white pasta if you're going to go that route. All these things have sugar in them. The things that you don't think have sugar in them, have sugar in them. And it's insane to me. Some soups, like the pre-made soups in the supermarket, in like cans or like even the boxes, have sugar. And that's insane. And we've become so accustomed to just having sugar in our diet that we don't even realize we're picking stuff up off the shelf and we don't think that we're putting extra sugar into our bodies. So it takes some time and some research to find these brands that don't have sugar in them, but like everything. Look at the back of things. Ketchup has sugar, spaghetti sauce has sugar, whole wheat crackers even have sugar, whole wheat bread, they put sugar in it. So like, look at the things you're eating. Read the back of labels, cane sugar, corn syrup, all these things. Anything that rhymes with groats, like sucralose, dextrose, all these things, look for them and try as hard as you can to find things without sugar. Because the more you're limiting the sugar you're putting into your body, the more you can have days when you go out with a friend and you can bulk up certain sugars into your diet because you've cut out so much on other days of the week. The fifth thing I mentioned was no soda or juice. And here's where we get into another situation. People are like, oh, but juice is fruit. Yes. And no. Most juices have more sugar in them than they have fruit in them. I'm the kind of person that if I'm going to have sugar, I'm just going to have it every day. If I'm not consciously making the decision to cut back on sugar, I'm just going to eat it every day. I'm just going to have juice and soda. Like, this is about consciously making decisions every day to live healthy, okay? And then when you go out with your friends, if you can have a glass of soda once a month when you go out with your friends, I'm not saying it's healthy, but if you can do that and still go back home and not drink any more soda for the rest of the month, go ahead. You have my blessing. I am the type of person that if I have soda, I'm always going to want soda. So I just would rather not drink soda. I do seltzer and I will drink water. So now I've explained to you what my general diet is. And I think one of the things that I've heard from people is, but what if, but I've had trouble losing weight because my husband or my parents or my family, my brother, my sister, the, my roommate who I live with, they eat these things. And that's really hard. I feel for you. Some people can have cookies in their house and not look at them. Some people have that willpower where they want it so bad that their roommate can bring home Oreos and they won't touch them. And maybe you have to have a conversation with the people you're living with and say, hey, can we maybe not keep these things in the house so that I can try to be healthier? Will you support me? And maybe they will. And if they don't, you're gonna have to find that willpower somewhere else, I'm sorry. If you're the kind of person who goes to the deli every day, regardless of what you have in your house, 
that's where you have to have a conversation with yourself. Do I love myself more than I want, you know, an oatmeal cream pie from a deli? Mind you, I'm mentioning all these things because these are the things that I ate. Oh my gosh. And guys, this isn't easy. I am not going to say this is easy. I'm not going to say this came naturally to me. If you think that this came naturally to me, wow, you think very highly of me. Because I was so bad my junior year of college, I would buy packs of Oreos and just eat a whole box of Oreos in like one sitting. Like it was, it was horrible. It's a little gross and it's a little embarrassing, but I'm sharing this to say that you can always turn back. Even if you didn't learn the best habits growing up or if no one taught you in school or even if you were an adult and, and you knew all these things, but you just wanted to do what you wanted to do, you can always go back. I used to have candy wrappers in the bed with me because I, I ate just entire packets of sour gummy worms. Oatmeal cream pies were my favorite. But I love the way that I feel right now. And every time my husband and I go out and it's not one of our like, we're gonna like go out, we're gonna eat a little healthier this week so that we can go out and cheat. If it's not one of those days, I find myself passing these stores and I'm like, is that worth it for me right now? It's not. Because on Friday, I know that my husband and I are gonna go out and have a nice dinner and have a enjoy. So that pizza that I see on Tuesday is not worth sacrificing the way that I feel right now and how good I feel about myself. So when you're on this journey, when you start this journey and you do start to have those cravings, it's not worth it. Remind yourself, it's not worth it. And it gets easier, day by day by day. It gets easier. All of that being said, there are days that I eat like a regular person. On my birthday, I go out. I have cake. I might have a little candy. Because it's my birthday. On someone else's birthday, I'm going to split a slice of cake with my husband because it's not my birthday. But I go out. I go out with my friends and sometimes I didn't have the greatest week. So if I go out with my friends, I try to get like grilled chicken with some veggies and skip the pasta. And if I have a really great week, I'll go out and I'll do some like cheeseburgers with a group of gals. Oh, I said the word gals. It's about balance, too. You don't always have to turn down a request from a friend. You don't have to have your family over and force them to eat kale the whole time that they're there. For the most part, you're following this because it matters. What I will say about exercise, a lot of people have asked me, what do you do? I'm going to say 80% of my weight loss has come from diet. 20% has come from exercise. I at the beginning, did very little exercise. I had like really bad back pain, so I was barely doing anything. I would walk, um, I would find hills, and I would walk up the hills, I would go to Planet Fitness, and i put the treadmill at a very high incline, because that incline walking does a lot more than just like regular flat walking. So that's how I started. I started with just walking, but like walking a lot, and changing my diet severely. And then as I started to feel better, the back pain went down, I started to do YouTube cardio videos. And I can put the link for the one that I've used in the past in the description so you guys can check it out. But I used to do these like YouTube cardio videos and it was like 40 seconds of a workout and I did like 20 seconds. And I would take longer breaks because it was still a lot for me and I built up to 30, 40, Eventually, I graduated from the video, and I started running outside, which has been really great the more weight that I've lost, because the closer you get to your goal, the harder it is to lose weight. So I started running outside. I started three minutes running, one minute walking. Three minutes running, one minute walking. I feel like the first time we went, we did like a mile, and then we built up to 
three and a half minutes running, one minute walking. Then four minutes running, one minute walking. Now I'm running three miles. Last night I even ran three and a half miles, which I find insane because I used to not be able to run up the block. One day at a time. One step at a time, only one time. If you, if you make mistakes, if you eat outside of the parameters that you set for yourself, it is not a big deal. Just go back to it the next day. Don't beat yourself up over it. It's a journey. It is a marathon, not a sprint. As cheesy as that sounds, one day at a time. Today, I am 149 pounds of 220. And it's taken a year to get here. But I feel good. I'm still going down. I'm increasing my runs. My diet has not changed. And that's the way that I like it. So I encourage you guys, use as, as few or as many of these tips as you want, if you want to use these tips at all. If you want examples for meals, I'm going to put them in the, in the description because it's way too much to talk about. I'm already thirsty. So I hope you liked this video. Share with a friend if you know someone who can benefit from this video. Show me some love, like it, subscribe, and I can't wait to see where you guys go on more health journeys.